Hi everyone and welcome to day 8 of 100 days of VBA. Today we're going to look at some built-in mathematical functions in VBA and how they work. Now I've got a basic project to set up here, so I've come into my Visual Basic window, I've created a new module, I've declared a function, I've declared two variables. Now something new today is that I've declared two variables on one line, just with a comma separating them. And I haven't put types today, and you'll see why when we come to our first math function. I've also just written a quick fetch data from the sheet, so application active sheet range, our range is B2 and then value. I've left result as equal to input for now, and this is where we're going to use our functions. And then I'm writing that result back into B3. So let's just put test in B2 and then run our macro to check. There we go, perfect. Okay, so the first function we're going to use is is numeric. So is numeric, and then our value in brackets. And this is return true or false as to whether a value actually is a number or not. So for test, it should return false. There we go. If we put 23, for example, then it returns true. And that's for whole numbers, or if we have a decimal point as well, it's still true. But if we combine numbers and some text, then it will once again return false, because that's no longer a numeric value. So that's the first one. The second one we're going to use is the square root function. So for square root, you just type sqr and then r value. So let's start with a nice easy one. So 25 and then go and that will give us 5. And if it's not an exact square, so let's say 26, then it will give us the square with the decimal place. If we try and give it some text, then we're going to get an error saying type mismatch. That's because we're trying to find the square root of the text, not a number. So that won't work. So that's square root. The next one we're going to use is absolute. So that's abs like this, and then our value in brackets. Now, the absolute value just means regardless of whether you have a positive or negative number, it will give you the value as a positive integer, as a positive number. So let's say 2.546, that won't change. But if we made that a negative number in the input, and then ran it, then we'll get the positive value as a result. And that's what that absolute function is doing. Next one is always a super useful one, round. So if we round our number, let's make that positive again. Then that is just going to round it to the nearest integer. Now round, you can specify a second option, and that's the, you can see, number of digits after decimal. So let's say we want it to two decimal places. Let's just move my bracket. There we go, now we have it to two decimal places. Now, something to note about VBA round is that it uses a special type of rounding that is commonly known as banker's rounding. You don't need to understand what that means, but it just means be super careful with it. And the alternative you can use is something called the worksheet function version, which works as the equals round function does in Excel. So to do that, we're gonna put worksheet function dot round, and there you go, you can see all of our functions. We're gonna have our input value, and then the number of decimal places that we want. So let's say we went down to one decimal place. And there we go. So that's important to note when using round, best to use worksheet function dot round rather than just round on its own. And of course, as you have in Excel, and as we saw in the autocomplete, when we started typing round, you can have round up and round down as well as just round. So there's another way of doing a similar thing, and that's using the integer function. So that's just int. Integer just returns the integer, no matter, you can't specify decimal places. So let's say input value, and that will always give us two. So even if we have loads more decimal places, then it will still always just give us two. 
and that's always rounding down as well. So you can see we're actually 2.54 here, which would round up to three typically. Integer just removes everything after the decimal place, so it just rounds it down to two. And our last one, our last one is random. So random is always super useful if you need to generate a random number or pick a random row. And it's as simple as uh, RND. And what that returns is a random decimal number between zero and one. So if you want to make it a bigger number, so then you define that by, let's say, six, and we'll get a larger number. Now, to generate a random number between, say, one and 10, then we combine a couple of our functions we've just looked at. So we'd say int, then we're gonna go open brackets, 10 times rand plus one. Just make sure I've got all my brackets in the right place there. Need an extra one in there, there we go. And now that's going to repeatedly generate us a random number between 1 and 10. So there we go. So that was a few maths functions that are built into Visual Basic. So we looked at is numeric to check if value is numeric. We looked at square root, so SQR, to get a square root of a number. We looked at absolute, so abs, ABS, to find the absolute value if you've got a minus number. We looked at rounding, using round and using the worksheet function, super importantly. We looked at the integer function and we looked at the random function. So there you go, that's a load of maths functions that you might need in your Visual Basic applications.